My next upload for this evening is for the interests of young people, for educators and especially for humanitarians with regard to how it is for a person experiencing not just humanitarian uh, violations, abuses against human rights, but also hate crime. Now, in a collective community where they have been quite destructive already, these kind of collectives have been demonstratively destructive to a lovely hometown community where I've been born and bred and lived all my life practically, and where I have a fabulous clean track record, thankfully. Um, so these people have been really destructive in this community. They've been of uh, fallacies for the past 15 years with their offences being whitewashed out of the records as they so think with avoidance tactics that are quite dangerous to young and old. So now I'm on the topic of these individuals not only just being in my proximity and disturbing the peace, but these people actually being continuously destructive in people's lives and not being mature enough, responsible enough or humane or intelligent enough to actually be able to address their shortcomings, their failings, etc. So it's a really sad sign of the times when a person is being intruded upon and when a person is being defamed by a person that isn't as competent or qualified or capable um, it's very insulting when a very competent, intelligent human being that has been of demonstratively positive efforts at home and abroad with new world legislation, new world reforms, new foundations even in the democracy is being discredited and disrespected to facilitate individuals that are of petty behaviours and petty mentalities and that are very avaricious, malicious gains and acquisitions that they have no rights or entitlements to. So as a teacher, as of the state, I have worked for three state departments and with a very clean track record, it's very dangerous what I'm tolerating. The protection that I have a total entitlement to has been violated. I have been exposed and as a royal, I have been obligated to share my experiences due to individuals perverting and obstructing the course of justice. Now, as I've mentioned, there's the issue, the very dangerous issue of two unidentified plain dress guards arriving at my um, weekend away accommodation. I chose to drive away for a weekend as any mother is fully entitled to without being uh, queried or questioned as a competent adult. And late at night, for two guards to just arrive without any prior communication with me, without any basis, without any foundations, without any explanation, and just to separate my child, that's abduction. So it's a very dangerous issue that's been avoided, and the issue of individuals that are still exacerbating that very single, very serious issue, that alone, that abduction on January 2017, that's one very dangerous issue that's just not so easily whitewashed. And what has happened to my child in that experience of an un unlawful um, care order is even more dangerous. So the unlawful separation is only one experience. And in the meantime, I've experienced people on my farm holdings in Artfart and Kilflin, individuals discussing uh, my matrimony and my matrimonial property and my ancestral property. So it's all quite serious what's going on. And this community has that kind of a reputation now. So it's sending out to the world a very big message about incompetence and disrespect and inhumanity and ignorance that's being bred by a collective that are incompetent in being mature and responsible. And it's also highlighting the repetitive nature of the cycle of financial theft and fraud and exploitation that's going on. So this is what's happening in this vendetta that I've experienced since I became a married mother. And as I've mentioned, adults or individuals or representatives of those facilitating further offences against my human rights or my constitutional rights or my royal patronage, those misrepresenting themselves with inauthentic identification or with a shallow purpose to facilitate a fraudulent, uh, guilty individual that I'm fully aware of, that has wreaked havoc in this community, that has disrespected the democracy and that has disrespected the government and that has disrespected children and women's lives. Those misrepresenting themselves in any further offences to me without addressing the reality of ombudsman procedures in this country are in contempt. They aren't just treasonous, they're in contempt of the democracy and the country. 
So there's a very dangerous issue about the reputation of the county of Kerry, the kingdom, in the southwest of Ireland, whether that's what they still call it nowadays. They've been changing things around so much, it's a ridiculous situation. So the fact of the matter is, there are people that are walking in through a door of this building where I live that aren't meant to be entering this building at all. So there are people of uh, mental health issues that have a difficulty addressing their mental ailments. And as a teacher, as an educator, I find that a huge concern. And for the interest of the Mental Health Commission, for those people not to be addressed in their uh, behaviours or to be acknowledged and treated, that's a liability to people's lives. That's a hazard to life that's being accommodated. So as I've mentioned, the guards and the government have been made aware of this issue. They know who my royal patronage is of. I have a very fascinating royal patronage from both my mother and my father. So the issue of these people being accommodated in disrespecting my safety, security, my properties in Artford, Kilflin and elsewhere, and my child being abducted by two guards in January 2017, and individuals still coming in and around my presence and my privacy and proximity are liable and are liabilities to other people's lives, which I'm fascinated that they haven't comprehended. Because when you damage a sacred royal, that's quite dangerous. When you mess around with a person's spiritual experience and sacred light, that's pretty dangerous. And especially within a three year time span when I've been practicing and studying my faith for decades. So there's a lot of ignorance being bred by people misrepresenting themselves on behalf of culprits that are of denigration, defamation, displacement and worse. There are individuals do, that do not decide or designate about my wealth, property, family, profession, purpose, etc. So getting back to the idea and concept of spiritual violence, those that think they're going to play around with royal sacred and sacred light fragments and disrespect me and my baby and my property. I have a very huge concern about your conception about re religion, faith and spirituality and the Declaration of Human Rights because in the greater scheme of things, those damaging sacred light and abducting a baby, a precious royal child, are not serving the greater good. So people that can't address these problems are creating bigger problems and the problem of rape and revenge point that I experience is quite bad already as well since 2006. So these issues are highlighting a very big problem in County Kerry, unfortunately. So I hope the guards and the government are prepared to address these issues. And I'd love if the United Nations would address these people that are of inhumanity and of disrespect to politics and sociology and culture and heritage and ancestry. There's a very dangerous issue being caused and there's a huge debt I'm owed and damages and defamation are to be corrected also.